Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today, we're gonna look at some custom training rapiers alongside some original rapiers from the Oakshot Institute collection. Stay tuned, it's really exciting. Rapiers. Now, I apologize for the poor lighting in here. The power just went out and I need to film this, but the sunlight filtered through the blizzard <laughs> that's happening right now uh, in Minneapolis actually shows off the surfaces of these rapiers uh, pretty well. So this custom trainer is on what we call a nailless nail blade, right? So it's one of our rapier blades that we have adjusted to have some flex in it so it's safe to fence with uh, while still maintaining rigidity and the weight of a real rapier. So one of the problems for folks who get uh, training rapiers is they often have much more in common with an epe than with a real rapier. Uh, this guy weighs about 2.3 pounds. Uh, the blade is uh, quite long. I think it's 40 inches, 42 inches. And this hilt from our three ring rapier is uh, beautiful, totally uh, historical and hand built. This is not a cheap uh, piece. It's well over a thousand dollars. Same amount of work as a sharp rapier has, but I think it fulfills a lot of kind of the needs that high-end rapier fencers have. Number one, it behaves a great deal like a sharp rapier. Its weight uh, is fairly substantial, but it moves beautifully, right? There's your center of balance right there. The blade has correct physics. It's still safe. We don't put any kind of a, a, a nail or anything on the end of these. Right? It's just rounded off and uh, flexible, which enables you to do cavaciones and disengages in a way that sometimes a nail on the end of the blade doesn't allow. So this one is our three ring. And the other one that I just finished is a custom piece with a pierced plate. And uh, it's got this plate, which is featured on our musketeer uh, rapier and a custom sweep and ring on it, three sweeps on the inner guard. Uh, this one has a similar blade, same length. This hilt is just a little bit heavier than the other. There's a bit more weight in it, but you can see really the beauty of proportion and of finish uh, in this piece. Now, one of the things that rapiers were for was demonstrating how stylish and awesome you were, right? They were not an unflashy uh, sword, right? Obviously. Now, yeah, these sweeps were to protect your hand, but it was artistic, right? And there's very specific styles that predominated in various places at various times, and we stick to those when we're creating either catalog pieces or custom pieces. And so this one is another beautiful uh, rapier uh, you can see here. Now, one of the reasons these behave more like real sharp rapiers than most trainers do is that we start out with just our regular sharp rapier blade. And we then grind a flat section into it uh, uh, that takes out some of the rigidity on the blade. Right? So the idea of a sharp rapier is you stab someone with it, the blade doesn't bend, it goes through them. That's obviously not what you want to happen uh, with a trainer uh, where you want it to flex, but this allows us, since we hand make the whole thing, including the blade, to get characteristics, handling characteristics that are really similar to a sharp blade while also still being safe. If you're gonna fight a tournament with it or something, you can put a 
rubber nub on the end. Uh, the other issue with training rapiers is the hilts are often way overbuilt. So there's too much metal in them, the blades are too light, the hilts are too heavy, and the hilts are too heavy because people want them not to break if they fence a rapier against a longsword or something. That's not something you should do. Uh, your rapier, to be balanced correctly, to operate like a real rapier, can't have huge heavy metal bars. Right? If you sword fight against someone who has a long sword and they hit your hilt, it's gonna get damaged, for sure. And that was okay in period. If you got in a sword fight, someone had a bigger sword, and your guard got dinged up, and your hand didn't get cut off, and you didn't die, that was good. Right? You wanted to have an elegant hilt that would protect your hand, but that didn't get in the way of sword fighting by being too heavy and too clunky. Right? So this is a trade-off for sure for modern people who want to be able to use it, you know, their training sword all the time against mixed, uh, there's the light it just came back on, against all kinds of mixed weapons and stuff. Uh, you can, I wouldn't with this, if you, you know, spend a thousand up to $1,500 on one of these beautiful uh, training rapiers, uh, it's gonna be your baby, right? It's gonna be your grown-up sword for training with, probably with people that you know and trust for when you're trying to really do the art. And here you can see that pierced plate and the level of finish on this thing a little more. It's a beautiful piece. So I'm going to show you a couple of period rapiers now that we can look at alongside of these ones. Put on my uh, white cotton gloves. So this is the first historical piece I want to show you. Uh, this rapier, you'll notice the sweeps, the arms, are all very fine, right? And the pierce plate is really thin, right? This plate is like a millimeter thick, and the pommel is big and heavy. Uh, this sword is rigid, right? But it's got physics to it, right? It moves appropriately, and it's reasonably tight to the hand. This one was probably designed to have two fingers over the quillen. Okay. This rapier weighs just about three pounds, and it's all in the blade. And this is a big, long, wide, sharp blade. It puts it kind of at the heavier end of rapiers. There were rapiers even heavier than this, but they were ridiculous. Next is this historical piece. Uh, the cool thing about looking at these historical pieces is you can see the forge welds, how exactly these were put together. You can see on this one that these bars thicken in the center of the rings, which is what these bars do as well. They also thicken in the center. It's one of those details that's often missed by modern makers who are making more economical uh, choices. This was possibly a relic of how they made them, uh, but it was also essentially a design consideration. Get the symmetry, which isn't perfect, right? The, none of the parts are actually circles. They're not round. The rings are slightly offset, usually uh, toward the back of the hand. And so this ring is offset this way just slightly because the human body isn't perfectly symmetrical. Cool piece. So that rapier weighed about two and a half pounds. Now this one's my favorite by uh, uh, Sagun the Younger from Toledo. Uh, this one 
has these very thin, delicate sweeps, this inner and outer guard, which are, you know, similar in structure uh, to this one that I just made. Uh, the sizes uh, are really similar, clearly different styles, but it gives you an idea of the organic feel of our training rapiers and our sharp rapiers and these historical originals. Now these two swords weigh about the same, which is essentially just under two and a half pounds. So, look at some art here, some beauty. Scroll back through, compare the new ones uh, to the old ones. Look at the ways that all of the rings and everything lines up at different angles. These are 3D objects designed for it. And when you've saved up your money and you know exactly what kind of rapier you want to perfect your art, give us a call, drop us an email. It's gonna, once you order it, it's gonna take at least a year because there's people in front of you uh, to get these things. And there's only really a couple of us at the shop uh, who are able uh, to really specialize in making these things. And we're not gonna ship one out unless it's beautiful. All right, thanks for your time. Bye-bye.